All right, so let's continue with our second example of finding and classifying critical points. Um, I left the results of this one up on the board because we're going we're gonna to come back to this example in another context um, in, uh, in a later video. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely get back to that. But let's come to this one first. Um, so we're going to follow that same procedure. We want to find and classify critical points. And so the first step, as over here, was to compute the gradient. All right, so we find our gradient vector. Extra, the, and we've got to take a little bit more uh, effort this time, right? We've got to do product rule. So the derivative here with respect to x, 2x times e to the y squared minus x squared plus, what do we have? We have x squared plus y squared times, ah, uh, let's see, um, minus 2x e to the y squared minus x squared. And that's just the x derivative. What about the y derivative? Uh, for the y derivative, well, it looks pretty similar. 2y e to the y squared minus x squared um, plus x squared plus y squared times, if we take the y derivative here, chain rule is going to give it 2y e to the y squared minus x squared. Okay. We want this gradient to be 0. So let's think about what this looks like, right? What does it look like? Um, well, in the x component, what do we actually get out of it? Um, we have 2x e to the y squared minus x squared minus 2x times x squared plus y squared times e to the y squared minus x squared. Okay. And we want that to be 0. But let's do some factoring first. Um, the 2x, that can come out. The y squared minus x squared, that can come out. And then I have 1 from here, right? Because that's everything. And what's left over here? x squared plus y squared. And we want that to be 0. And so there's two possibilities here, right? Um, one possibility is that x equals 0. Or um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, now that's interesting because that's a whole circle's worth of points, right? Um, so we're not just getting a single point out there, we're getting a, you know, infinitely many points, every point on the circle. But um, that's only setting the x component equal to 0, I still have to set the y component equal to 0. So what happens if we do that, right? So, so far this is just for the, uh, for kind of the x component. What about when we do y? So when we do y, well, we're going to have kind of the same, the same thing. Let me do the factoring ahead of time this time. Uh, there's a 2y that's common to both. And we have e to the y squared minus x squared. Okay. Times. What do we have? A 1 from here. And then this time it's plus x squared plus y squared. Right? And we want that to be 0. But of course, this can never be 0, right? Because that's bigger than or equal to 0. That's bigger than or equal to 0. We're adding it to 1. Right? So that's always greater than or equal to 1. Can't be 0. 2 can't be 0. That can't be 0. So the only way this whole thing can be 0 is if y equals 0. OK? All right, so what kind of critical points do we get out of this? Well, let's see. Um, y has to be 0, and now I come back, to, come back up to here. And so one option would be the 
critical point zero, zero, right? X is zero, Y is zero, that's one possibility. Um, another possibility is, well, if you, if you put Y equal to zero in here, what are the two X values where Y equals zero? Um, X could be either plus or minus one, right? And so we get two other critical points, one, zero, and minus one, zero. So three critical points in total. Um, now we can start thinking about applying the second derivative test. You might be a little bit, you know, nervous about doing that because, oh boy, there's going to be a mess, isn't there? Look at all these terms we've got to deal with. Um, let's, uh, let's tough it out. Let's see what we can get if we, if we work this through. Let's see what we can do. Um, let me use a little bit of room over here and see what we can figure out. Um, so, so this is my, what do you think is going to be easier for doing, do we work up here? Do we take the factored version? I think we probably do the unfactored version, but it's, uh, it's going to take some effort. So what does the x derivative look like? Working over here, there's going to be a 2 e to the y squared minus x squared. Um, then if I do the derivative of this part, minus 2x times that 2x, um, minus 4x squared e to the y squared minus x squared. Um, but we're not done yet because we have this other term, so we've got to deal with that. I'd say it's probably worth our while to combine these. So this is going to be minus 2x cubed minus 2xy squared. And that whole thing is multiplying the exponential there. So if we do the derivative of the part out front, we've got minus 6x squared minus 2y squared e to the y squared minus x squared. Still with me? What do we got? We got one more term. Huh. Let's see. We still got to do the derivative of this part and then multiply by that. So we got a minus 2x times the exponential times what we've got. So that's going to give me 4x squared times my x squared plus y squared e to the y squared minus x squared. And ha, that's one of the three derivatives we have to find. So we're going to be at this for a while, right? Um, but yeah, let's, let's, I think we tough it out. Let's press on. Let's see what we can do. Um, we're going to be really glad that we have equality of mixed partials, right? Because that at least saves us a bit of time. Let's do the mixed derivative. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the 2x. We're going to do the y derivative here. We're going to get a 2y. So we get uh, 4xy e to the y squared minus x squared. 2y when you take this derivative, so 2y times the minus 2x minus 4xy e to the y squared minus x squared. And then we've got to take this whole mess here times this derivative is going to give me a 2y. So 2y times minus 2x, so we get a minus 4xy times x squared plus y squared times e to the y squared minus x squared. All right. That's a lot of work. One more. Then we can finish this off, right? Sometimes people complain that I don't do examples that look hard enough. This one looks pretty hard, right? At least there's lots of work involved. Let's do the y derivative. 2 e to the y squared minus x squared, okay? Um, plus 4 y squared e to the y squared minus x squared. That takes care of this term. Um, then I come over here, take the derivative of that part, that gives me a 2y times a 2y. So there's another 4y. Um, so that's, 
You know what? Actually, there's a four Y from that one. We got, let's put them together. There's actually eight of them. Let's do some combining. Why not? Huh? Saves ourselves a little bit of trouble, doesn't it? I think so. Okay, good, good. And finally, we got, oh, we got to do this one, right? Derivative of 2y gives me just 2. 2 times the x squared plus y squared times the e to the y squared minus x squared. Okay. Finally, we have the derivative of this part. So we get another 2y. So 4y squared, x squared plus y squared, e to the y squared. All right, let's hope I didn't mess that up. I don't make any guarantees. I am, uh, one thing I did notice, I think we could have, if I, if I hadn't combined things here, we probably could have done a simpler, you know, a similar sort of simplification. Um, we could have had a minus 8x squared and, but anyway. Uh, it works out. We've got, we've got our results. Now we can kind of check things at our critical points, right? So let's see. At 0, 0, at least these are easy numbers to plug in, right? Let's see. What survives if I put x and y both equal to 0? Um, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. I get a 2. A equals 2. So let me just divide this up here. A is 2. B is 0 all the way across the board. And C, that's a 2, 0, 0, 0. C is 2. So D is going to be A times C minus B squared, so 4 minus 0. So D is 4, which is positive. 2 is positive. So 0, 0, that's a minimum. Good. All right. What about at 1, 0? Now maybe we've got to work a little bit harder. Let's have a look. So y is 0, x is 1. So what survives here? Now it's, it's going to get a little bit ugly, right? Um, let's see. So f at 1, 0, f, x, x. We're going to get um, 2 e to the minus 1. We come over here, minus 4, e to the minus 1, uh, minus 6, e to the minus 1, and then finally, 4 plus, that's going to be just 1, right? 4 times 1 plus 4. Okay. So, well, we, we don't need to add it up here. We'll add it up over here. Um, A is going to be minus 4 e to the minus 1. So minus 4 over e. Um, ah, the cross term is 0, right? Because everything has, at least, has a y in it. So b is still 0. In fact, b is going to be 0 for all of them. That's convenient. Um, Oh, and, and you'll also notice that actually A is, is going to be the same as well because everywhere you see an X, it's squared, yeah? We never have a, a, just an X by itself or an X cubed, um, except here where the Y makes it zero. Um, so actually we can do these at the same time. That's good news. Um, what, about, uh, what about C? We come down here at 1, 0. We're going to get uh, 2 e to the minus 1, 0. This is going to be plus 2 e to the minus 1, and then 0. Ah, so 4 e to the minus 1. All right, 
Um, well, D is then going to be just simply A times C. D is going to be for both of these. I'll just fit it in here. D is going to be minus 16 um, e to the minus 2, which is certainly negative. Um, so both of these points here are going to be saddle points, right? So we've got one local minimum, two saddle points in this example. Uh, all right, so that one's, uh, that one's a lot of work, but I think we got her done. Um, here's something for you to think about. Here's, uh, here's a problem for you to think of uh, if you want later on. Um, do this whole thing over again with a minus sign there in front of the Y and see what you get. Uh, well, what's going to be interesting there is um, that's going to give you a minus sign down here. And what's going to happen is you're going to get that equation showing up in both components, that x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, and you actually will get an entire circle's worth of critical points. And then you've got to try to think about, like, what, what do you actually do? What do you do if you have a whole circle's worth of critical points? Um, can you even apply the second derivative test? The answer is no. Um, if you have a whole circle's worth, there are definitely going to be degenerate critical points. Um, there's a, there's a theorem you can prove, and I think this is in the last section of the textbook uh, if you want to look at it. There's a result you can prove, which is that um, uh, any uh, non-degenerate critical points, so the ones for which d is not equal to 0, um, they're always what are called isolated critical points. So you never, you never get like a circle's worth or like a whole bunch of them. Okay? If, um, if d is not equal to 0, that critical point is by itself. All the nearby points are not going to be critical points. Um, so it's an interesting example to consider. Put a, put a minus sign in front of the y squared. Play around with it. Um, try putting it on a computer. Ask the computer to graph it. See what it looks like. It's actually, uh, it's actually quite interesting to see. Um, so I'll leave that uh, for you to look at. And I thought about doing one more example. I think, I think we'll leave it at this. Um, I might throw one up maybe on an assignment or something for you to look at. I think, uh, I think this one was probably enough for us to, uh, to go on. All right, so we're going to move on and talk about extreme values in the next couple of videos.